Hello IT pros and welcome back to my IT workshop. So in this video we're going to troubleshoot this old, really old, old, old Dell Optiplex 745 uh, desktop computer. And uh, as I mentioned in a few videos ago, um, some videos, ago, some videos <laughs> before this one, I have a, I have found like four of these old computers from 2008 or 2007. And I'm just trying to work them out to see if something is going on. And this is the third one. This one is supposed to have Windows um, Vista installed on it. You can see it in the, in the, re the reflection of the screen. Well, we are looking at the screen right now, okay? So I turn on this computer and it's not working. I never turn it on. I just grab one of the four or the third one in this case. And I say, okay, I'm going to troubleshoot this if, if possible, of course. And we're going to see what, what happens. We're going to see what's going on. And the reason is, uh, why, why am I troubleshooting these old computers? We, I'm not going to give it to, I'm not going to put it, these, these computers into production. So why bother? The thing is, uh, instead of throwing them away, which uh, many people sh would do perhaps, is that I just want to show you how to troubleshoot because the computers I have been showing you so far, besides the fact that the power supply is not working or the hard drive has failed, they don't have anything else because they are from 2014 or earlier. So that's why I want to show you this. So in all this time, if you are still watching this video, in all this time I have turned on the computer but it's not responding. So that's why the, the screen was black and now it's showing me that uh, Dell has this monitor has not recognized any input. So that's, that's what is not working. So now let's troubleshoot this computer and see if we can fix it. Now I'm going to change the angle of my camera a little so you can see what's inside this computer. I mean the motherboard and all that. And you can hear <laughs> the old rusty noise that the switch makes when I open it. All right, here we are. You can see the motherboard in all its glory. Here is the power supply, the CD reader, and this computer has a floppy drive. You can tell because the IDE cable that you're, you're seeing here, um, exactly that one. And something I notice after I open this computer is that <laughs> it doesn't have a hard drive. As you can see here, it was removed some, well, many years ago, I think. So since I don't have a hard drive for this computer, I'm going to bring I'm going to take out, but before I have uh, four slots for RAM, three are being used at the moment, as you can see here. I suppose each one might be one gigabyte or 15 megabytes, but we're going to check. Now I'm going to grab another hard drive from the other four, well, three computers to see if it works. So I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, I took the hard drive from one of the other three computers and this one is 250 gigabytes it's a western digital and it has a revolution speed uh, of 7200 revolutions per minute which is in my opinion very it's new so i suppose this hard drive was replaced sometime in the past by a new one which is this one but since it was in one of the old computers i'm going to use it. oops oops <laughs> make an oopsie there so I'm going to connect the power and the SATA connector. And we're going to see if this computer turns on now. Well, it turns on if it shows us something. Now you can see the reflection, the video is sped up a little, and nothing is showing on the computer. So it's not the, it's not the lack of a hard drive. So we are back. Uh, at, the, at the computer, I have to shut it, I turn it off, I have disconnected the cable from the power and all that, as you can see here. And now what I think the next, what I thought it was the problem was the internal video card, which is exactly that one. So it's integrated in the motherboard, so I'll, perhaps that might be failing because that was a case on another computer. So what I was going to do at this point is just replace it with another, but I decided to try something first. This cable is in the in the way, so I'm going to re reset these um, uh, these RAM modules. So I'm going to take. I'm just doing this at random. I just choose one and say, okay, I'm going to put it somewhere else. 
and this because of previous experiences when the RAM was the problem. So perhaps uh, one of these RAM uh, memories is not working correctly or the socket itself is not working. So you hear the clicks. Didn't press it enough. There you go. Now, I'm going to take this other one as well. And I'm just going to keep it. I'm not going to put it back. Just to test. I started, I connected the computer. I pressed the, uh, the power button. And it's still nothing. It was not showing me anything. So let's go back to the motherboard. So I decided to uh, keep trying on the RAM. I was going to try this a few more times to see if that was the problem. Otherwise, I was going to proceed replacing the video card. Well, adding a video card from the other from the from the other three computers. So I replace. I reset the RAM as you have you have as you as you have seen me done. Now I connect it again. I'm going to power at the computer. And just like that, I can see the logo. So that was the problem, the RAM, the socket, or the socket, I think, was the problem. Now, you can see it has many errors. It has time of the day not set. Please run set to program. Oh, well, I have my CD, DVD, well, CD, <laughs> my disk. Configuration information, for instance, run set to program. Previous fan failure. I, I see, you can see me there uh, tilting a little. It's working, I can see it working, the, the fan. And system battery voltage is low. So that tells me right, right, uh, I mean, re really quickly that it's the C CMOS battery. So just click uh, continue. And this took a long time to, to load. Uh, you can see the mouse pointer, but I can move it, but it took, again, a lot of time. So that's why the video is accelerated. So this is Windows 7. No, what window is this? Vista. Uh, uh, no, it's seven. <laughs> it's seven. So, of course, I don't have the password for this computer. So I'm going to reset it using Hiram Boot CD, which I have I have made a video about that. You can find it in the top right of the screen. So I'll be back when I reset the password. Here we are back. So we are inside. Well, I was able to reset the password and, and I was able to log into this computer. So as you can see it, uh, as you can see here, this is Windows 7, and the computer is kind of slow. It takes a lot of time to load things, but when I close the, those two windows, it did it really quickly. Now I was trying to show you what we, what I normally do, which is open a CMD or PowerShell type system info, so you can tell us everything about this computer. But as you are going to see me do here, I click on on the uh, Windows icon, the start button, the start button, and I type CMD, and I was waiting for a long time, so nothing, well, nothing was showing up. I mean, CMD was not being loaded. So, I mean, I just decided to. It was not worth it all the wait, so I'm going to just um, shut down the computer, or restart the computer, and access the BIOS. So you're going to see me doing that in a few seconds because I consider it it was too it was really slow so it was not worth it working on it but the windows work windows is working so it's not the hard drive well we know now that it was the ram so here we see so I restart the computer strike f1 to continue f2 to run setup utility so I'm going to choose the ladder and here we are at the at the BIOS itself. So now we are going to well, processor info. You can see the speed and all that. And we're going to time and date. And uh, you can see uh, Monday, June 2007. I don't know why I change. <laughs> it's not worth it because it's going to the information is going to be lost anyway. The next the next restart. So now we are going to be back on the computer. The next step then is going to be while well, I disconnected the, the cable from the power. And the next step is going to be to reset this uh, RAM module, RAM memory, uh, to, to see if something else is causing the problem. I mean, if to try to find out 
Uh, we are going to hear the clicks. There you go. Uh, to find out if the socket that is not being used at the moment, you can see the second starting from top is the, the one that is failing. Next step, as you have seen in the errors, is that uh, the CMOS battery is low or low voltage on battery. So this is the CMOS battery and I'm going to take it out. You see kind of a little clip there and that's all you have to press, really. I'm going to use this screwdriver and you just press it very gently. You don't have to use a lot of strength, a lot of force and it comes out really, really neat. Now, uh, I have a replacement for this. Um, you can see the model there and you can buy it for, it's not that expensive. And I took this other, I'm going to show you in a few seconds, uh, from a Dell Optiplex 3010, that is the commission, to test it out here. Here we go, here you can see the other battery. So it's a CR2032. There are other models as well, both are the same, CR2032. Some batteries are a little thicker, but if it fits, and normally they are three, three volts, if they fit in the socket where this is supposed to go, you can use it. Now you're going to see me put it back. I mean the new one. Well, it's not new, but the one that is uh, a little newer than the other. Now you see me there, I, I press it a little with my thumb. I didn't have to do anything else. And I'm going to turn on the computer one more time. So you see the errors, no problems there, because we have to configure it, well, kind of configure it. So it's the Optiplex 745 series, the BIOS delay. I wonder if there is an update for that, <laughs> for that BIOS. Now you can see that time of the day is not set, system battery voltage is low. Now we go to time, date and time, we're going to uh, make it correctly, which is March the 1st to 2019. And I'm going to make some changes here just because I can't do it. I'm going to use the USB as the first bootable device when you connect a USB, of course, by default. And now it's asking me, do you want to save? Yes, save and exit. Before it was not, it was not asking me that. Now the system is loading and you didn't see anything. You didn't see any alert. You didn't see any error. So besides the fact that the, the, that the RAM socket was failing, uh, it also needed a new, a new battery for the CMOS. Now that the fact that Windows is slow and all that, that is not working as it should, well, that's another thing. We know the computer is working. Perhaps we can, if we needed to take out information from these, oh, well, not take out, recover information from this hard drive for the client, we, we could do it now. Um, um, if they have pictures or some, something like that. So that's uh, something I wanted to show you guys. I hope you found value on this video of troubleshooting all these. This could happen in newer computers as well. The RAM might fail or might not be, might not, they might not be correctly connected. You have to hear those clicks when you connect the RAM. That's normally um, a way the system is telling you or the motherboard is telling you, hey, it's connected correctly. Or it could be um, some other thing like the BIOS, uh, the, the CMOS BIOS, the CMOS battery, or perhaps could be like, uh, as it happened before in another computer, that the, the integrated video card was not working, so we had to change it to another. So, thank you much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any comment or question, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And also click on the bell notifications for future videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.